Petri nets are popular modeling formalism related to data flow. They have two types of elements, places and transitions. A place can contain any number of tokens. Tokens are usually depicted as black circles. A transition is enabled if all places connected to it as inputs contain at least one token. Once transition is enabled, it can fire, consuming one token from each input place and putting one token on each output place. There can also be a number on input connection, showing how many tokens must be at connected place before transition can fire. And for output connections, numbers show how many tokens it generates. A state of a network is called marking. Marking is the number of tokens on each place in the network. If a token provides input to more than one transition, then the network is non-deterministic. A token on that place may trigger a firing of either destination transition. Let's look an example. A PetriNet model of two concurrent programs with a mutual exclusion protocol. Each of the two programs has a critical section. Only one of the programs can be in its critical section at any time. Program A is in its critical section if there is a token on place A2. And program B is in its critical section if there is a token on place B1. The job of the mutual exclusion protocol is to ensure that these two places cannot simultaneously have a token. With initial marking as shown, both transitions are enabled, and the one that fires is chosen non-deterministically. Petri nets are very useful for modeling concurrent systems. A concurrent system is a system where many entities act at the same time and interact. They offer a good understanding of the system flow. PetriNet is an easy-to-understand graphical representation of a system.